welcome to the video on inverse relations. To begin, we're actually going to talk about three different words. And a lot of times when we use these words, we're using them interchangeably when we shouldn't be. So I'm going to take you through one by one, explaining what each of them means, especially in a math class. So the first word is opposite. Opposite really means negative. So when you hear the word opposite, I want you to think more about a sign. So if a number was positive, its opposite would be negative. So we'll just write an example here. 4 and negative 4 are opposites. The second word is reciprocal. And most of the time, um, I find that students are pretty good with this one. Reciprocal, I want you to think about fractions. And what that would mean is to flip the numerator and denominator. So for example, 2 thirds and 3 halves are reciprocals. So those are two very different words, right? So we definitely don't want to use these interchangeably. And that brings us to the word of the day, which is inverse. And what I want you to think about when you hear the word inverse is to undo something. So there can be inverse operations. There can be inverse functions. There could be inverse relations. So I'm going to give you a bunch of examples for inverse. Adding and subtracting are inverse operations. Can you think of another example of inverse operations? Multiplying and dividing. How about another one? Squaring and square rooting, right? So those would be operations. Another example would be y equals x plus 9 and y equals x minus 9. So here we do kind of come back to this idea of adding and subtracting, right? So you'll notice that this has a plus 9, this has a minus 9, which might make you think of this opposite word over here, right? Changing signs. But remember, it's not about being opposite, it's about undoing. So if you were to add 9 to something and then to subtract 9 from that same thing, you would have undone what you previously did and just wind up back where you started. Okay, So that's the example of an inverse relation. Okay, so let's get into it. Remember that every time that we hear the word inverse today, we're going to think of undo. Our first example, we have f of x equals x plus 3. So what's happening to x? We're adding 3 to it. I bet you could write down the answer right now. What would undo adding 3? It would be subtracting 3. So I, th I think we already know what the answer is supposed to look like. But I'm going to take you through a few different steps for questions that are not so obvious. So if you want to peek ahead to example 3 here, hmm, there's a few th different things going on. Maybe it's not so obvious what the answer would be there. You might have an idea, which is really good. But I really want to just think about a process. The first thing I, I do is that I consider that f of x to be a y. All right, so if I just deal with x and y's, it's a little bit easier. When you take an inverse of something, you are switching x and y. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to write down up here. To find an inverse relation, switch x and y. This is the most important part of the lesson today. Inverses, you are switching x and y. And by doing that, 
that's the part that is undoing, all right? The, that's the inverse. So now that I have an x and a y, let's switch them. x now equals y plus 3. You are looking at two inverse relations. You may not like looking at the second one so much because it doesn't start with y equals, and typically we like to change that. So if I were to take this one and solve it for y, I would subtract 3 on both sides, right? And that's where I'm getting, ah, there's the x minus 3 that we thought would show up, All right? So if you switch x and y, you really have done the work. But getting to the y equals, that's kind of the cleaning up part of the work. We want to try to do that. For the second example, we have a g of x equals 4x. Can you think about what the, uh, the first thing I said to do here was? It was to cross out the g of x and replace it with a y so we can switch x and y. So that's going to be my next step. Now I have x equals 4y. So right there, that is the inverse function but I don't have it in terms of y, so I want to get y by itself. So to do that, I have to undo this 4, which is being multiplied with the y. So we're going to divide, right? So you need to know inverse operations, things that undo, in order to answer these questions. So now, let's take a look here. The original function was y equals 4x, right, 4 times x. What would undo this multiplying? Oh, dividing. x is being divided by 4. So if you feel like when you look at one of these questions that you could go right to this answer, I don't personally have a problem with that. But then again, these were two very simple examples where there's not really a whole lot of work to show anyway. On this third example, it might be a better idea just to actually go through your steps. So that's my suggestion. So here we go. I'm going to go a little bit faster now with my explanation. So I'm going to change that g of x to a y. I'm going to switch x and y. So there, I've, I've done the hard part, really, is switching x and y. So I have my relation. That is the inverse. But now I'm going to solve for y. So to get y by itself, I'm going to have to get rid of this negative 1 or the subtracting of 1 here. So I'm going to add... 1 to both sides, so now I have an x plus 1 equals 2 thirds y. And this 2 thirds is being multiplied with that y. So division undoes multiplication. This is one of those problems where I'm going to try to push your thinking a little bit. Just to, It actually helps you out a lot. Instead of dividing by 2 thirds, it's actually easier if we multiply by the reciprocal, because that's what the division would lead to anyway. And right here, you'll notice that I've already brought up those three words at the top of your page. They all get used within this unit, and that's why they're so important to, to keep separate. They're their own thing. So I'm multiplying by the reciprocal in order to cancel this multiplication. Don't forget to do it to this side as well. And I can just leave this as the 3 halves times x plus 1 equals y. Or if you wanted to distribute that 3 halves, that would be fine as well. OK, moving on. We don't just work with equations, right? Because um, we can always represent a function by its table or its graph, you know, not just an equation. So I've given you a table of the h of x function. I'm going to now make a table for the inverse function. So that's called h inverse. And this symbol right here really means inverse. So that's probably the first time you're seeing that. Um, it looks like a negative 1 exponent. And I mean, looking at, yeah, I would say it is. But because of function notation that we're using, it actually isn't being used as the exponent it's being used as a different symbol. So, sorry, I know that's a little confusing, but it's just something we're going to have to learn. It's a new symbol. So as soon as I see that, I think inverse, which makes me think of the big word undo.
Now, in the previous questions, we undid things, but we also did it by switching x and y. Remember that this column right here is really the y column. All we got to do is switch columns, and we are done. 0, negative 3. I just switched x and y on that point. Let's keep going. 4, 2. Switched x and y. Negative 1, 5. Switched x and y. 3, 7. Switched x and y. I am done. It is that simple. I also like working with the graphs because graphs are just the points all connected up. So I just need to take some of the points on a graph and flip-flop the x and y values if I'm going to make the graph of the inverse. Some people really like taking the graph and making a table from it. So if you are one of those people, I absolutely recommend it. I'll just write it down here as a little example of what I mean. Here's my table of x and y values. Let's start with this point right here. I think that's nice. That point is 0, 4, right? x value, then the y value. How about this one right here? That point is at 1, 5. Uh, how about this one here? That's at 2, 8. Let's get some on the other side here. How about negative 1, 5. Now let's get one more little point there. So negative 2, 8. So if I'm going to take the inverse, I'm going to flip flop those columns. 4, 0. 5, 1. 8, 2. 5, negative 1. 8, negative 2. The only difference between this example, number 5, and number 4 is that since we were given a graph, I think they, we probably should make our answer as a graph. So let's take these points that we just found, right, and let's come back to the graph now. And while I'm at it, why don't I do it in a different color if you have that, that opportunity to do it. I think it actually would make this stand out a little better. So my, my point four zero there, um, 5, 1 and 8, 2. And 5, negative 1 is also a point, and 8, negative 2 is also a point. So this is reminding me that inverse relations, right, are called inverse relations because they're not always functions. You'll notice that right here, this would fail the vertical line test, right? There's more than one output at this input of 5. There's more than one output at this input of input of 8. So Right here, this sideways parabola is what that's called, would not be a function, right? Which is why we call this a relation. Um, at this point in the video, I also would like you to write down in the bottom right-hand corner a little pumpkin so you can draw the to the best of your ability, a little pumpkin, since we're getting into the fall season. And that way I know that you are listening to the video. And on to our last problem. So for example six, we have f of x, and we also have f inverse of x. So this time we know that these two are already inverses of each other. So think about Remember, the entire lesson today is about what the word inverse means. What does it mean? If undo didn't just pop into your head, you probably need to watch this video again. So undoing. Let's look at this first composition problem. I'm supposed to do f inverse of 5, take my answer, and plug it back into the f of x function. These two things are supposed to undo each other, right? If I put a number in here, then do this to the number I get, it's supposed to undo it, we better come up with 5 as the answer. I'm going to show the work just to show you that that's true. So let's do f inverse of 5. That would be 5 plus 3 over 2. So that turns into 8 over 2, which is 4. Now I'm supposed to do f of 4. 
I'll plug that into f of x. So 2 times 4 minus 3 is 8 minus 3, which is 5. Exactly what we're supposed to wind up with. So these two things, okay, when you see a composition of inverse relations, When you see a composition of inverse relations, you can automatically know that this is the answer because you just did something and undid it. So let's come over here now. What would f of f inverse of x be? Oh, x, right? Whatever's in that spot is what you get. Okay, so um, we've talked about really important stuff today. I want you to think about the parts that you have questions on. When you get to the survey, make sure you write those down and um, answer those questions to the best of your ability. We'll see you in class.